Namaste, Guru Studio Yogis. This is part of a four-part series that builds on an understanding of how to do backbends, uh, called Befriending Backbends. So each of these will be about half an hour, um, much as the ones in the past have been. And I'll do kind of an abbreviated constructive rest period in the beginning, and then we'll get right into some of the movements. So we'll just begin as usual in constructive rest position, knees bent, feet flat on the ground. Allowing your body to surrender to the solid foundation of the earth. Feeling both of your feet, the back of your pelvis. Your lower back, mid back, and upper back. Feeling each of your shoulder blades on the ground and each of your arms. Feeling the support beneath the back of your head, pressure against the back of your skull. Relaxing the roof of your mouth. And allowing your belly to sink with each out breath. And we'll remain in this position for a few more moments before I ring the bell. attention back to the present moment. Following the sound of the bell with your mind as it diminishes. expand outward to help to heal those around us. Taking a deeper in-breath and a longer out-breath. Opening your eyes with a soft gaze if they're closed. Drawing both your knees up towards your chest and rolling over to your right side. Here, using your arms to push yourself up to a seated position. Now, stay again. So, backbends, uh, there's four different components to a successful backbend. One that will help to build strength and balance in your body, and that will ultimately be more fulfilling and ca avoid causing any problems or compensation patterns. So for those four different components, and I'll just dem demonstrate this, you don't necessarily need to follow along. I'm just going to start in a regular prone mountain position and just demonstrate this. So the first of these is to activate the hamstrings, which is what we'll be working on today primarily. The second is to lift the hip crests, which I'm doing now. The third is to knit the ribs, which I'm doing now. And the fourth is to maintain thoracic extension, which I have begun to do now. And then you might add another bend to it, bending between the shoulder blades, let's say, for a little cobra, while maintaining all those different, four different cues. And then with an out-breath, you might release and take a pose, like crocodile, where your hands are folded in front of your face and you can relax. Or sometimes people like to go back to child or or simply just rest in constructive rest or in prone mountain. So those are the four components of the back bend. Activating the hamstrings, lifting the crests, knitting the ribs, 
and create thoracic extension that's through the, the upper part to the back to the shoulder blades. The first one we'll work with today is hamstrings. So a good way to practice active hamstrings is to start with a position that's fairly straightforward, fairly supported by the ground, which is a half bridge. So for half bridge, you start in constructive rest position, squeeze your shoulder blades together, shrug them up towards your ears, creating a pocket in your upper back, and then just lifting your pelvis with an in-breath and with an out-breath, letting it come down, just kind of a warm-up. Just getting the muscles beginning to move, lifting, lowering the pelvis with an in-breath, lifting up the pelvis with an out-breath, coming back down. The whole while you're maintaining this pocket in your upper back where your shoulder blades are squeezing together and shrugging up towards your ears. This also tends to strengthen the lower back. And if you're having problems, some soreness in your lower back, sometimes using the muscles like this can be better than just stretching. At least that's been my experience. Okay, so this time we're going to hold this position. We're going to lift up and hold with the pelvis up in the air, squeezing the shoulder blades together, shrugging them up towards your ears, and just play around with this. So you can start feeling how your hamstrings are active. They're turned on right now. That's active legs. Just taking a mental snapshot of that so that you can activate them in other positions. To intensify this effect, you might drag your heels towards your hips, and I'm doing that right now. You can see my body pulse forward a little bit, and you can feel those hamstrings even more intensely. You really want to make sure that you keep your toes in the ground at the same time. All right, and then with an out-breath, coming back down. And we're going to do that one more time. And when we come back up the top, lifting the hips, going to pull your heels back towards your seat just to intensify the effect of feeling the hamstrings, squeezing the shoulder blades together, shrugging them up towards the ears, lifting the pelvis, and drawing your heels, dragging your heels towards your pelvis. They're not going to move, but they you might feel your body drag forward a little bit. Just feeling your hamstrings. This is active hamstrings. This is how you know they're active, how you're doing active legs. Now with an out breath, Coming back down. Okay. Then go ahead and draw both your knees up towards your chest. Roll over to your right side and use your hands to come up to a seated position and then come up to standing. So I active, those active hamstrings, they can be used in a lot of different positions. So even the beginning position of sun salutation, when we're doing mountain pose, you can activate your hamstrings. This is a little harder to do, but just imagine seeing if you can turn on those hamstrings. So, hamstrings are turned on right now. Hamstrings are soft. I don't know if you can see the difference in my body. It's going to be probably pretty subtle. Hamstrings are active. Hamstrings are relaxed. One thing you can do is you can just kind of feel the hamstring right here active, you can feel it firms up, and then when it's not active, it's softer or pliable. So seeing it in this position, if you can still, if you can activate your hamstrings, for me it helps to have a little tiny micro bend in my knees. Now one of the things you might notice almost immediately is that when you activate your hamstrings, your hip crests actually tilt upwards just a little bit. That's building into the next component of the back bend. The body is all interconnected. When you start working with those hamstrings, you start activating them, they start beginning to mold the body into a back bend. So let's just do active hamstrings, keeping the hamstrings active. With your out breath, hands go down and back. With your in breath, arms come forward and up. And if you know how to set your shoulders back, go ahead and do that, rolling your pinkies inward. And with your out breath tipping forward from the waist to the touch down, you can even keep your hamstrings active as you go forward fold. When I do this, I can almost feel my feet kind of clawing into the mat a little bit. And then with your out breath stepping back with your left foot, 
right foot's forward, left knee can come down or can hover, doesn't matter either way. Uh, but either way, seeing if you can drag your front foot back, and you'll feel, again, the hamstring is active. That's active hamstring, so you want to be able to do that consciously to do a good back bend. As you breathe out, stepping back into down dog, you can even do it maybe in down dog. For me to do this in down dog, I have to kind of rotate my thighs inward a little bit, rotate my toes inward a little bit, and really send my tail back. And then coming forward to plank, again, you can activate the hamstrings, a little micro bend to the knees, and coming down to the mat. And now the cue often here is to press the tops of the feet into the mat, that's great. Can you press the tops of your feet into the mat while activating your hamstrings? Can you feel your hamstrings, are they active? Are they soft? Reach over the other side. Active or soft? Can you make them active as you press into the ground? Okay. Then curling your toes underneath, pushing up and back. We're just going to skip the cobra for now. Into downward facing dog. I'm just taking a little rest from acting my hamstrings. They, they feel like they have plenty of work for now. A little rest in downward dog. Then looking between my hands, my left foot steps forward, stepping forward with your left foot. And go ahead and drag your front foot back, activating the hamstrings again, just feeling that activation. And with your out breath, stepping forward, forward fold. You can relax them now a little bit. Letting your head hang. With your in breath, Extending your spine, pressing palms into shins a little bit to extend your spine. And with your out breath, forward fold. With your in breath, coming all the way up. By the way, as I'm cueing in breath and out breath, don't feel obligated as you breathe out, palms come back together. Don't feel obligated to hold your breath the entire time. That's really not the goal. The goal is to continue breathing, which is to coordinate each movement with either an in breath or an out breath. And even that is not absolutely critical. All right, so worked a little bit with the hamstrings. I already feel they've been working. I guess I've been doing a little bit less yoga lately. As you breathe out, let your hands go down and back. As you breathe in, arms come forward and up, seeing if you can activate your hamstrings. And maybe activating your hamstrings, you can even lift your hip press a little bit. And as you breathe out, Tipping forward, touch down, letting head hang. And then the right leg steps back. Right knee either hovers or comes down, your choice. Dragging your front foot back. Maybe you drag your, front, your back foot forward a little bit. Mainly just trying to get this activation to the hamstring. As you breathe out, stepping back with your left foot now into downward facing dog. Sending your hips away from your hands, making the spine nice and long. Maybe you activate your hamstrings. Coming forward to plank or half plank. Keeping the body all one whole. Active hamstrings, lowering down. Active hamstrings, pressing the tops of the feet into the mat. Active hamstrings as you press down with your pubic bone. Active hamstrings, bending between the shoulder blades to come up into a little cobra. And then active hamstrings, pushing up and back. Downward facing dog. Looking between your hands, right leg swings forward, active hand swing, shrinks, drawing your front foot back, back foot forward, dragging them towards each other like scissors, with your out breath stepping forward, forward fold, letting your head hang, relaxing the hamstrings. Little micro bend the out in the knees, pressing palms into shins, extending your spine, and with your out breath. Forward fold. And with an in-breath coming all the way up. Arms reach overhead. Active hamstrings and out breath. Releasing palms together. Okay. So active hamstrings um, doing this way can really you can really start to feel it. Um, it may be tough at first to really get a sense of of activating the hamstrings when you're upside down. But again, you'll know it because you'll feel that your hamstrings are turned on 
um, if you can kind of reach back to your leg. All right, so some other positions that we might think about with these, this, these active hamstrings would be something like Salambhasana or Locust Pose. So Locust Pose, you're going to come down to your belly to begin. To this, just your, you're going to be in what's called Prone Mountain. So your palms lead by your ribs. Your chest is rolled up to the mat. Your nose is pointing directly downwards. It almost forces you tucking your chin a little bit. And see if you can get your sternum rolled up to the mat so that almost all the way up to the top of your collarbone, you can get connected down to the mat. Point your nose right down, tilting your nose down towards the center of the earth. This is Prone Mountain. So from Prone Mountain, you can really activate your hamstrings. You don't even necessarily need to push your, the tops of your feet into the ground to do this. You can just activate your hamstrings without that. Maybe the other cue you can think about is like reaching back with your pinky toes towards the wall behind you. As though you could really, just really try to get an extra half centimeter of a reach with your pinky toes. Now for Salambhasana, the next step is to bend between your shoulder blades to lift your head off the ground like little cobra. And then maybe you extend your arms back behind you and use your hamstrings to lift your legs off the ground. Now you want to just go ahead and check and make sure that it's not the glutes that are doing this. So I'm just going to quickly just grab on there and say, okay, how hard, how hard is the hamstring? The hamstring should be really hard. The glutes should be relatively soft. So I'm really going to see if I can reduce the load on my glutes and increase the load here. These should be really firm and this should be soft. All right. You want a greater challenge, arms can be out to the sides or extended overhead. And three, two, one, and release. Just taking a few moments to appreciate how great it feels to move some energy through the body. And go ahead and switch sides, turn your cheek to the other side, get both sides of your neck, a little bit of a, a light twist. Back bends. Back bends tend to be very heating. Go ahead and push up and back. The child pose, which means that when we're doing back bends, you always want to kind of counteract them a little bit by doing some forward folds to cool down. So, child pose is a good good forward fold. And then for the rest of our forward folds, going into supine leg position, you might take a strap or a belt or something, or if you have the flexibility, you can grab your feet as you do this, taking your left leg up in the air. Give myself a little movement through my toes. You can also, I mean, you can really even grab the back of your thigh like this if you want to try to get that type of stretch too. You just extend your leg flex your foot. You don't have like a strap at home, although most people have something they can use as a strap. You just kind of draw your leg up this way. Um, we'll grab the calf. So I make sure you have a micro bend in your knee so you're not hyperextending your knee. But I'll give, give my cues as though you've got a mat, or sorry, got a strap. So grabbing both straps with your left hand, keep your right hip connected down to the ground as you move your left leg off to your left side. Oh yeah, that's good. Especially after working those hamstrings, it's good to give them a good stretch. Feels nice and Again, if you don't have a strap, you can use your arm to sort of support your leg as it goes off to the side. But it's not too hard to find something that can act as a strap. As long as it's sturdy, drawing your leg back up towards the ceiling, you can switch hands, grab the straps in the other hands, 
So you can stretch the outside of your leg. You don't really need to turn your hip over like this. Some people like to do that. It's, I don't really recommend it. I don't think it's probably going to hurt anybody, but I do not recommend doing that just because it kind of swivels the hip. Sometimes the hip can cause problems. You swivel it too quickly like that. Bending your right knee, setting your left ankle on your right leg, right, right knee. Now if this is enough for you, that's good. Otherwise, uh, just kind of push your left knee forward. You know the drill. If you need more, you can grab onto your thigh, draw it back. Okay, and then relaxing both legs out long onto the ground. Just take a few moments for introspection, noticing the difference between the left and the right leg. One maybe feels lower to the ground, one hip may feel lower to the ground, one leg may feel longer. For me right now, one leg, the left leg just feels a little light, which is kind of a nice feeling. And then drawing up your right leg up toward the ceiling, doing the same thing, sort of activating your leg. Something I didn't really mention, I usually mention this, but when you have your strap, seeing if you can keep your your hamstring active as you stretch it. Just noticing how that feels. If you haven't done it on the left side, just doing it on the right side, just noticing what difference that makes in this stretch. And then of course afterwards you can do it on both sides, just to be even. But since I forgot to cue it on the left side, it might be interesting just to see how that feels different from left to right, if you can notice a difference. So yeah, I'm just trying to activate my hamstring just like I would if I was using one of those, if I was doing the, the half lift or the half break rather back bend, we were doing the beginning. And then switching hands over. Right hand, the right leg goes into left, or right foot goes into left hand. Switching outside of the leg. And then bending your left knee, across your right ankle over your left knee. To stretch the IT band, or if you need to, maybe pressing your knee forward, maybe grabbing your thigh and drawing it up towards your chest if you need it. Drawing both knees up towards the chest, rolling over to your left side, use your hands to push yourself up, and then come forward into a seated position. I know this is an optional stretch for some people, this is, seated stretches aren't the best. Um, if this works for you, go ahead and get to a seated stretch. So your spine is upright, you kind of feel your sit bones on the ground. And then from this position, see if you can press your heels down into the ground in front. Um, this works better if you're on a mat, so I'm going to my mat here. You're going to press your heels down to the ground. It's going to make your knees bend a little bit, but see if you can still keep your knees basically, like basically straight. Pressing down into the mat, and then feel your sit bones press down to the mat as well. You're going to feel, see if you can activate your hamstrings this way. So keeping your legs active, hamstrings active, breathing in, breathing out, reaching forward, and then one more breath in, lifting up your spine, half lift. And now with an out breath, forward fold. So the principle of what, keeping your legs active as you're stretching them like this is that you strengthen the muscles as you stretch them. It's rare, but sometimes yogis will actually stretch their hamstrings so much that they cause injury to themselves. Um, and one of the ways that we can mitigate that, or we can stop that from happening rather, is by making the muscles stronger as you make them longer, so that they're not just getting stretched and stretched, that they're getting stretched and strengthened, so they become supple, not just long. All right, and then you can go ahead and come back out of that. And let's just take a few more moments um, for a little bit of a Shavasana. Laying back, 
onto your mat. Maybe if you have something else that you feel like you need to do before you do Shavasana, like you want to, maybe you want to do a twist or something, feel free to do that too. Otherwise, just settle back onto the mat. Feeling all the places where your body makes contact with the ground. Maybe you start with your heels. And move your attention up to your calves. Feeling the whole network of the hamstring muscles that we work today. Feeling how it goes all the way from the hips, pelvis, all the way down to the heel. That whole network of muscles. And that's the, the lower half of the body's part of the back bend. Whenever you do a back bend, that's the lower part of the body's work. And if you're doing a back bend without activating that lower part of the body, it's really not a back bend. It's a half back bend, or it's a, a hinge, like a hinge on a door, rather than an arc, like a bridge going over a stream. Then the back of your pelvis, then your lower back lift off the ground, then your shoulder blades relax down. Feeling each of your arms, feeling the back of your head. Seeing if you can relax the roof of your mouth, allowing it to broaden and soften. Allowing your belly to sink with your out breath. Perhaps you'd like to do a little bit of pranayama. We haven't done that for quite some time. Just imagining that your belly it has a balloon within it, and that as you breathe in, that you fill that balloon to its capacity before you allow the air to go out. The in-breath fills up the belly to its capacity, expands it outwards, and with the out-breath, the belly sinks back down. diaphragmic breathing. If you'd like to move into three-part breathing, imagine that not only does the belly have a balloon, but also the chest has a balloon. And that after you fill the balloon of the belly, you begin to fill the balloon of the chest. So you might expand the balloon of the belly, and then expand the balloon of the chest before letting all the air out. part breathing, filling the balloon of the belly, blow the chest, filling all the air out. You definitely don't need to make it as acoustically um, well, viable as I was just doing there just to help you hear my breath. It can be quiet. In fact, ideally, I think breath is quiet unless you're doing something specifically to make noise with your breath. Let's go ahead and breathe in, expanding the belly, and then expanding the chest, and letting all the air out at your own pace. You can make this your last three-part breath before you return to normal, authentic breathing. Just allowing your belly to sink with each out breath. Let's see if I can actually manage to end this video in time. Taking a deeper in-breath, the longer out-breath. 
drawing your knees up towards your chest and rolling over to your left side. From here, using your arms to push yourself up to a seated position. All right, one more breath in together. With an in-breath, arms come up overhead. With an out-breath, palms come together to the chest. Namaste. Keep well. Be healthy. See you soon.